Well, welcome back, uh, listeners. Thank you for tuning in. Um, this week, um, I'm having a conversation with a, a very good friend of mine, Andy Wilson. Andy is somebody uh, I met through seeking my own uh, changes in this world, looking at when I was looking at online, how I could make money online. Um, and Andy was one of the people that I've become great friends with over that journey. And I thought it would be great because Andy's doing lots of great things over the last couple of years. I thought it would be great to have Andy on um, today. So welcome, Andy. Thank you very much for your time today. And uh, thank you for having me on, Mel. It's an honour to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, you know, in the spirit of this podcast, it's all about people that don't want to settle in whatever that looks like for them. Yeah. So if I can ask yourself, you know, what was the thing that you realised you were settling for? Straight in the deep end there, aren't you, eh, with that question? Well, really, um, if I was to summarise that, I would probably say that I was settling for a way, 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 way compromised, compromised version of who or even what I am in all areas of my life. Because... You know, something I've come to realize over the past couple of years is, you know, I was depending on my circumstances to make me feel a certain way. And when my circumstances weren't a certain way, I wasn't feeling how I wanted to be feeling. Say, for instance, that might look different on the surface. It might, you know, if you, you could look in the area of career or relationship or friendships, um, what whatever it is you know how much spare time you think you're you're getting in your life um where you live all of these things we allow to define ourselves by and really they've got absolutely nothing to do with who we are like nothing like that that world out there is for us and it's happening but it's not happening to us it's happening for us it's not it doesn't define who we are you know I, I don't define my sense of value or purpose by what job I'm doing you know I don't define my sense of happiness by a relationship I have whether I have one or have not or even the quality of it um, and it's to understand really that all experience is um, created really by our thinking or way of being with our circumstances so let's say for instance you know if i have a job that i really don't like you know well that's just making it all about me isn't it that's like i've decided that this should be a certain way and that um, for me to be satisfied, the world needs to look like this, whatever that is, my, whatever my criteria are, you know, whether that's to do with money or perks or, you know, whatever it is about the job I do or don't like. But what is it that I'm bringing to that job? You know, it's like a job doesn't in the way the best way that I can describe this is a job or anything in life doesn't fulfill me. Doesn't give me meaning. It doesn't define me. I bring the meaning to the job. I bring the fulfillment to the job. I bring, I am the only, my reaction, my response to my circumstances is what defines me. I think some people listening to this, Andy, might not fully get that. So, okay. What do you mean by that? If you could put it in sort of layman's terms. Okay, so if I was in, you know, let's, let's take it to a relationship scenario, right? Um, excluding, of course, if, you know, somebody's in an, an abusive relationship where, you know, it's, it's become a matter of survival, then clearly they need to get out, right? And I, I absolutely, completely agree with that. But I think that there's a lot of dissatisfaction that takes place in all areas of life relationships being a great example of whereby we expect this person to be a certain way to allow us to experience a certain feeling you know we expect the other person in our relationship to 
you know, be a certain way with us. You know, we expect them to support us. And then not only do we expect them to support us, but we expect that support to look a certain way. Mm. We've got our idea of how that's going to show up. And if it doesn't show up exactly how we think it will, which of course it never does, then we're dissatisfied. So what I'm saying is that essentially we're, by allowing our circumstances to define the quality of our life, we're selling ourselves down the river, you know? It's like the happiness comes from what you bring to a situation. You know, it's who you're being in response to a situation. Because if you allow, if you allow circumstances to define who you are, well, your circumstances change. You've got no control over that stuff. Mm. So therefore, you've got no control over how you feel. You've got no control over how happy you are, you know, and, and, and who you're being in response to whatever goes on is what defines you, because that is something that you get to keep that no one or nothing can take away. You see, circumstances are all about things that you're doing and things that you have. And this includes your feelings as well and your thoughts. Thoughts and feelings and circum are just circumstances. These are things that we do and things that we have. But who we're being in response to that mm. is what defines us. You know, that is what really brings our sense of satisfaction, fulfillment, and true lasting happiness to a situation, whether that be relationship, whether that be career, whether that be at the amount of free time, whether it be the time we spend with our kids, whether it be just taking a walk in the park, who we're being in that moment. You know, are we bringing our past into that moment, expecting it to be a certain way, you know, or are we allowing that moment to just arise fresh in our experience as it is mm -hmm. so that we get to revel in the awe and wonder of the moment? and truly enjoy the moment as opposed to expecting it to be a certain way. And this all happens on a very subconscious level. This all happens in the background because of something that's happened in the past. Yeah. And we drag our past, we carry it around with us, you know, because something's happened that now we've decided we're never going to let that thing happen again. And so we go around constantly of our life becomes about avoiding that, letting that, that thing ever happen to us ever again. Yeah, and also yeah. we, tr we chase the things that felt good. Yeah. So our life now becomes about what we like and what we don't like. Our life now becomes about what we're trying to avoid and what we're trying to, what we desire to get. But it's never about who we are, where we are, what we, where we are right now. Yeah. You know, and that, that really is detracts from the entire experience of being alive. And when you upscale your level of presence and awareness in the moment, everything in your life upscales. So if you alter the way you're being in your relationship, you'll see that everything in your life up levels. If you alter the way that you're being in your career, everything in your life upscales. Because how you do one thing is how you do everything because it's in your being. It's got nothing to do with what you're doing. It's not what you're doing for a living, it's what you're bringing to the job that matters. So who is it you're bringing to the job? Because who it is you bring to the job goes everywhere with you. You can't get away from yourself, right? That's, who, that's in your being. You're taking that everywhere with you. And so whatever's in your being goes into your every action. And so therefore, when you upscale your level of being, your entire life upscales. You're, because all your, your problems on that level of consciousness disappear. Yeah. And really, you know, that for me, that was, that was a huge realization to realize that I was de being dependent so much on my circumstances. I was so unhappy in my job because I didn't like what I was doing. I was unhappy in my relationship because I wasn't getting the right level of support. And, you know, they weren't showing the right kind of interest in the things that I wanted them to show interest in. You know, um, I wasn't getting enough time doing the things I wanted to do, but all of this was my idea of what should or shouldn't be happening based on, well, what, based on what, you know, based and on what got, society tells us, right? 
Well, maybe. Yeah, a lot of it is society driven. A lot of it is, is driven from our past experience and, and trying, like I say, aversion and desire, trying craving, basically trying to cling on to the experiences that we like and chasing after them and trying to avoid the experiences that we don't like and avoid those. But really what I'm saying is that all experiences equally valuable because as souls, we're here to experience and grow. It's just that, just experience. There's no such thing as good or bad experience. There's only experience. Yeah. And all experience is equally valuable. And, and, and for us to judge that and decide that it's not right is kind of like absurd. It's kind of stupid, really, because it's a very human thing to do. But when you actually look at it, what we're actually doing is like taking what's taken 13.8 billion years to get here and then deciding to just disagree with it. Yeah. You know, it's like, who are we to say that? You know, this is a, it's, life is an absolute gift right there. And we're deciding to just disagree with it. And for me, that's just, like I say, you know, that's, that's throwing the baby out with a bathwater. Yeah, I mean, that, that is, um, what, what you've just said there is up, it absolutely resonates with my soul. And I know that, because we've both uh, loved the, the Michael Singer book, uh, The Surrender Experiment, and, um, mm. and also the online course that he did. And uh, yeah. you know, there's a lot of that in there. And uh, yeah. I think for, uh, for listeners that are listening right now, if, if, if what Andy's saying resonates, I would, if you haven't checked out the surrender experiment, I would highly, highly recommend it because it's absolutely mm. fantastic. Um, mm. Okay. So when do you think this sort of realization started to happen for you? You know, I know because we've talked um, in the past about you were in various different jobs that didn't satisfy you and all the rest of it. Yeah. Was there a sort of defining moment that, that sort of brought you into what the hell am I doing with my life? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Certainly in that area as well, because um, basically for, for most of my life, I, I, I drifted around from job to job, constantly basically avoiding the, the, the notion of having to go to work, really. I, I always worked hard, don't get me wrong, and I was always employed, um, always worked to earn a living. Um, but I was work for me was always something that I had to just get done and get out of the way so that I could get home and do what I really wanted to do. So there was this split in me, this divide where I had to kind of be this kind of robot just to get this stuff done, almost kind of switch off my heart, um, to, to just kind of wait till that's over so that I can go home and do this other thing, which I was considering more worthy, right? You know, maybe I'll be getting home to create music. So I'm sat here in my studio. I've always loved creating music and I've, been, I've loved it so much that um, whenever I'm not doing it, I just crave to do it. And so whenever I was at work in a job that had nothing to do with what I loved, <laughs> because there's another level of settling, right? It's like um, what I was constantly doing was just waiting to get that out of the way so that I could get home and do what I wanted to do, like I say. Now, as I, as I went through life in that way, I went from job to job to job to job, kind of just drifting in and out, almost falling into jobs by accident, rather than intentionally creating a future for myself that I felt excited and inspired to follow. No, no, that wasn't the way I was living. Who I was being was, you know, I wasn't bringing anything to the work situation at all. I was just... I was just expecting that that's a thing I have to do to earn money so that I can kind of inauthentically kind of disappear off and go and do what I really want to do. Yeah. But who am I being while I'm at work? Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I was always friendly to the people I was around, but it was never genuine. I was never really truly there. And I was drifting from job to job, to job, to job. And you know, it got to the point where then I completely changed my career. I completely reinvented myself several times. And I became good at that. I became good at re reinventing myself in order to change my circumstances so that I could feel better. And you know what? It worked. But then it wore off and I had to do it again. And then I had to reinvent myself all over again. And then when I, as I started to get a little bit older, that became exhausting. 
having to constantly reinvent myself and start again because things had got had lost their sheen was had become utterly exhausting and it got to the point where then you know after reinventing myself a good two or three times with completely different careers and it took a lot of skill and a lot of energy to do that i was i was re- i was thinking to myself i was actually very adaptable and very flexible as a person because I was able to shift and now I'm going, I'm over here doing this. And I taught myself this whole new set of skills to go and work on a different career. But I, there was me thinking I was adaptable, but what I was actually being was entirely inflexible because I was expecting to stay the same. And I was, I was adapting my circumstances to suit me. So I was being inflexible and I was, I was expecting my circumstances to do the, the adaptation. But you see, I had identified myself with my circumstances so much that I thought it was me being adaptable, but I was being completely inflexible. And it got to the point where I was just getting the same results over and over again. The, the, um, the lack of fulfillment kept creeping in quicker and quicker and quicker the boredom, the, this, the despair and the feeling of, oh my God, this just drives me crazy. It just, I just feel like I'm a fish out of water in this job. That feeling came quicker and quicker and quicker to the point where I knew that if I changed my job again, that feeling would come almost straight away. And it got me to a point where because I knew it was going to come so quickly, I, I, I got stuck and I couldn't change. I couldn't move because I knew I was going to be out the frying pan into the fire. I knew that if I changed again, I would only get the same results again. And so I was stuck in this impossible position of hating what I did, but unable to change it because I knew that the next thing would only get me the same results. And I just didn't know what to do because all I'd ever done to fix that, and there's the key word fix, was to change my circumstances because I thought it was my circumstances that were making me feel a certain way. And I rich, literally, I'd back myself into a corner where I couldn't move. And it, it, it kind of broke me, to be honest with you. It really, really tore strips out of me. And it really broke me down. And I had to really, really strip myself back to basics and look what was going on and really do some work on understanding myself better. Why was it I was in this impossible situation? And that's, you know, as I started to do that work, I started to understand and uncover that my circumstances had actually zero capability of making me feel any way whatsoever. I was the one creating my own reality without even realising I was doing it. I was the one, you know, just throwing that experience away and just, you know, not taking responsibility for creating my own fulfillment for creating my own happiness and then once i started to take that responsibility i started to see ah what i bring to this is what the situation shines back to me you know is that making sense yeah so this doesn't sound like it happened overnight obviously gosh no this is many years yeah (laughs) So, um, so this was years of building up this realization and, and noticing the repeating patterns and all that kind of thing. Was there a moment where, you know, when you were in that last job or whatever, and you just thought, I, I can't change because it's just going to hit me tomorrow? Yep. Um, when was that? And, and, and what sort of transpired from that total realization? Well, it was just the stuckness, you know, because I, was, I, I realized it and I knew from my experience, like I say, that if I, if I jumped again, if I changed again, yeah. that the same, I would go and get the same results, you know, and, and, and it was, it, that was an awful moment to, to realize that because I, I, had, I had no idea what else to do because all my life I was fixing my circumstances to fix the way I was feeling. And that was just the way that 
I was being. That was just my way of living. That was I, that I had identified with that way of being so much that I didn't have any other clue what else to do. So I was stuck. I had to literally, it, it literally, it, 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 it nailed my feet to the ground. I literally couldn't move. I was so unhappy, but at the same time, couldn't do anything about it. And it was like, it, it created this kind of impossible situation that just went to work on me internally without me even doing anything. It created a kind of breakdown, if I'm honest. You know, and, and that took time to unravel. And what came out of that was the realization that to change only brings more of the same. And that sounds kind of paradoxical, but changing is kind of fixing and by fixing you're implying there's a problem <laughs> you're kind of backing up the problem so really what you're focusing on is the problem so really what you're going to manifest is more of the same by focusing on a problem that apparently needs you decide needs fixing you only create more of the same because what you're trying to do is get rid of something or get away from something there's no acceptance of how things actually are and actually just loving what is. And it's only when you actually let the dust settle and stop trying to fix everything out there in the world, stop trying to fix your circumstances, that actually you start to realize that everything is for you. Every, all experience is valuable. Even, you know, even uncomfortable, what we might label as unpleasant experience is at the end of the day, just experience. And it's all valuable and it's just to be with whatever, whatever is. And rather than worry about feeling better, we should worry about, well, not worry, but concentrate on get better at feeling, right? But was there a day for you? I mean, I'm sure it wasn't just a day, but um, where, where something happened that, that sort of gave you a different perspective and, and gave you a different um path that you thought you could follow because you were in this thing really it wasn't no i mean not really it's been a, it, you know much the same as how yeah, i got myself into that mess getting myself out of that mess hasn't been an overnight revelation it's been a gradual process over a couple of years of taking a uh, putting trust in the process of just loving what is, you know, not trying to fix my circumstances. And then gradually I start to see that that brings results that are in alignment with, you know, with a higher calling, you know, that are in alignment with, you know, who I truly feel myself to be. You know, that they bring fulfillment, they bring satisfaction, they bring happiness. Whereas on the, on, the, on the face of it, you don't necessarily look like they will. But in, you know, coming together with loving what is, rather than trying to fix something, by realising that everything's for you and not happening to you, and that everything's already perfect, that there's peace everywhere, all around me. And in and having trust and having faith that that is the case and then living according in accordance with that with that belief and starting to that are in alignment with that belief so it's a very gradual process okay so um a few uh technical issues there we're, we're back on so in terms of you know this this realization of being and just seeing your life completely differently and realizing what's what's actually important and not the stuff that you were placing importance on um how how has that changed what you now do in terms of let, let's focus on your career for example how has that how has that impacted you well because um rather than concerning myself with what it is i'm doing I'm instead concentrating on who I'm being and that can be, you know, who I'm being can be in anything I'm doing. You know, that is who I'm being goes everywhere, everywhere with me. Right. Mm. So, you know, 
I get to bring whatever I want to bring to whatever situation is at hand. So of course, you know, there's certain circumstances that allow me to be more or, you know, like to, that are easier for me to be myself in, if you like, <laughs> you know, my true self as in loving what is. Um, and you, there's nothing wrong with gravitating to the circumstances that make it easier for you to do that. But it's when you try to change the circumstances based, based on the fact that you think that different circumstances will make you feel a different way. They won't. They just won't. More money won't make you, make you feel a different way. A different relationship won't make you feel a different way. A different job won't make you feel a different way. It might do to begin with, but afterwards it all comes back and you end up getting the same results all over again until you learn that lesson. And at the point of learning that lesson, that's when the circumstances then transform to match who you're being. So as Wayne Dyer says, you know, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, right? Mm. And so let's take that, for instance, in terms of how you just asked me about my job, my career. So if let's say, for instance, I was in a position where I was feeling um, unfulfilled and bored and frustrated in my job, which happened a lot in my life, <laughs> right? Um, I have now developed the ability to, rather than to want it to be different and have absolutely no power in being able to change how I feel because I can't change the fact that it is the way it is. Rather than that, I now get access to changing who I, how I'm feeling based around who I'm being in response to the circumstance. What is it I'm bringing to the job? You know, so I, I, I bring a sense of appreciation and joy and gratitude for, you know, being asked to play a part in what's in the moment that's out there just happening in the world. You know, th this moment, here it is. It's got absolutely nothing to do with me whatsoever. I'm not making it personal. I'm not going to decide that it needs to be this way or that way, that it should be this or shouldn't be that. It should be more this or less of that. It just is what it is. And I then am free to be and act as my true self in that circumstance. I now get to create whatever I want to create in those circumstances, bring whatever I want to bring to it. And if I want to bring love, I want to bring appreciation. I want to bring gratitude. I want to bring compassion. I want to bring leadership into that situation. Then that's what I bring. And I'm free to do that because I'm not bound by my circumstances telling me I can't do something because there's not enough money or there's not enough time or this isn't what I enjoy doing. So I can't be happy. That's all rubbish. It's all an illusion. Absolute rubbish. And that was that was how I was living. I now get to free myself of what's going on out there just appreciate it for what for what it is and I've, I've now freed myself up to be an act in the way that I see most appropriate to bring in what I want to bring to the circumstances and all those words I listed is in love appreciation joy gratitude all of those things are what I love to bring to as to life as much as I can and I'm just not bound by my circumstances anymore so for, for the benefit of the listener um, because when you're listening to something, you like to have visuals. Okay. What were you doing and what are you, what are you doing now? I was doing a job and I was thinking to myself, there was an unconscious belief that I should be doing something different. But what was the actual job you were doing? Okay. So let's say for instance, I was in, um, uh, graphic design for quite a while yeah. and I'd be sat in front of a computer and I'd be saying to myself oh you know I don't I don't feel you know I'm sat in front of this computer I'm not speaking to people I don't feel very alive this is a bit boring I'm working on a job here that isn't very creative um, for some pharmaceutical company that I don't believe in what they're doing um, and I'm not getting paid enough and I'm having to spend eight hours 
in this office at this screen. I'm not getting any exercise. Um, I've got limited choice what I can eat because the shops around here and they're so expensive and I have to then um, uh, commute home on the train. That takes an hour and a half and it's hot and it's sweaty and it's crowded and people are unpleasant. And then I get home and I'm just really tired and then I have to go back and do it all again tomorrow. That was the old me. The new me was I wake up in the morning and I just say thank you for the fact that I woke up in the morning for a start. <laughs> because we just take that for granted for a start. And it's like, well, what am I bringing to that moment of waking up? Is it just, oh, God, what have I got to deal with today? No. It's thank you. Just start with gratitude and then continue. Start as you mean to go on, right? So I would then sort of like get to go on the train and I would sort of communicate with people on the train as as much as possible and I would do my you know I would I would just be present with people and I would enjoy whatever it is or maybe I'm listening to without the dread of what I'm about to go and do at work I would get off the train and I would enjoy the exercise of running up the escalators and I would appreciate the fresh air as I walked out the station you know and then I'd enter the office and what is it I'm bringing to my relationships with people as I enter that office you know I start a conversation with the security guard I smile, I smile and say hi to people in the lifts, maybe have a little bit of a joke, raise the mood, walk into the office um, as I come out of the lift and, you know, just greet people, go and say hi to people and then sit down and just be grateful and think, right, how, how can I, what can I bring to this job, this, this creative project that I'm working on that makes it feel more creative, that makes it feel more alive, that allows me to put more of me into it and then, um, appreciate the to and fro with the accounts people you know and then I can sort of I, I can just bring a positivity and a joy and a gratitude to it and then you know just just easy come easy go it's not not expecting anything to be any other way than how it is and just things allowing things to occur and processes to unfold in the creative process so for instance of creating a piece of artwork kind of just realizing how things kind of suggest themselves to you. Whereas before I might have been really bogged down in, oh, I don't want to do this. And I wouldn't notice those little subtle details suggesting to me that, oh, that makes all the difference bringing that. That makes this project really interesting. You know, and then sort of discussing that with somebody in a way that includes a fascination and, and, a, and a natural interest um, and, and a sense of appreciation for the work. It's like, what am I putting into that work? Not what is that work giving me? What am I giving to the job? You know, what am I giving to those people? Because if, if, if I'm expecting everything to come to me, it's all about me. And therefore I'm living up in my head. I'm not out here in the world with people. There's no service. <coughs> There's no service or gratitude involved in being in your head thinking wishing things were different you know fulfillment and satisfaction comes from being in service out here in the, in the world in reality with people in relationship to the world and people because then you're out of yourself it's not about you you're in you're in flow you're in life you're on the court you're not spe sitting back spectating waiting for it to finish you're, you're an active participant in your own life, taking issue with, you know, taking a stand with, with regards to how you're going to, how that experience is going to occur to you. Is it going to be an enjoyable, joyful experience or not? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you, you mentioned a minute ago about being in service for people. Um, and I know that you recently um, had a complete about turn in terms of your what you want to do with your life. So another one, another one, <laughs> yeah. another one. But this is from a completely different place, isn't it? Yeah, totally. This this one suggested itself to me rather than me rather than me saying, um, "I don't like this. I need to get away from this," and then just falling into another job out the frying pan into a fire you know therefore going to manifest the same results no that's not how this happened 
this suggested itself to me in terms of um, entering into uh, a career of, of coaching people um, to help them understand the the things that I've been able to understand for myself. You know, the, the level of upscaling of my of the whole experience of my life that I'm currently experiencing is something that I really would love to um, give other people access to. Because everybody has access to this. Mm -hmm. Everybody has access to this. Everybody has everything they need already. Everybody is whole, perfect and complete. And yet we go about life as if we're not enough. We go about life as if we're broken and need fixing. I just need to learn this bit of information before I can do that. I just need a bit more money and a bit more time and then I'll be happy. I just need the perfect relationships and then I'll, then I'll be satisfied. I just need, I just need the right house. I, I, I just don't feel right in this. I just need the right job to make myself feel a certain way. No, stop. Just stop trying to fix the world and yourself. Everything is fine. Now, it's, it, there's nothing to say that you can't change your circumstances. Of course, you can change what you do or where you live or who you're with in a relationship. But it needs to be done from a place of nothing. It needs to be done from a clean slate. You can't create on top of a mess. You first have to free yourself from the mess you've created in the past out of aversion and desire. Clinging and aversion, basically. Clinging to what you want and want to keep and that you can't because life takes it away from you. And avoiding what you don't want and you can't because life gives it to you. That's life. That is an experience, is, is there to be lived, you know? And so the, this opening up and realization that actually is there's an inner peace and an, and an inner joy, which is our innate state, which is covered up by this sense of brokenness and need to fix that we have, that creates a whole bunch of thinking that just covers over the, the innate human experience of joy and satisfaction that is always there under the surface if we just let it rise up. You know, one way of looking at it is I, you know, I heard a metaphor which I, a, a while back, which I, I really love. And, and it's to sort of think of ourselves and our happiness as the blue sky. And our thoughts and our feelings are like the clouds in the sky. You know, they pass over, they're all different. You can't change the clouds. You can't change the shape of them. You can't change if they come and you can't change if they go. But one thing's for certain, they're all different and they do, they all come and they all go. But no matter what happens with those clouds, it, there's always behind them is the blue sky. It's always there. No matter what thinking is going on behind the thinking before the thoughts occur, there is that place of peace and innate joy and happiness that exists for all human beings, all human beings. And, you know, it's we are the sky and our thoughts and feelings are the clouds. Yeah. And our, our true self is always, always there if we just allow ourselves to see it. And it's just clouded over with thought. Do you know Some what? Like it. it's, it's funny, you know, with the, with the situation we're all in right now with uh, COVID-19. Mm. It's giving people space because um, people are stuck at home. They're not uh, charging around the country or, you know, some people are not working. Some people still are working. So yes. more so for the people that are not working, you know, they're, all of a sudden they've got this time on their hands. And, you know, it's like parents are not shipping the kids off to athletics, swimming, dance, whatever it might be. You know, they're having to get creative at home, you know, because they've got to keep those kids entertained. And it's that yeah. fight violence as well with, with going on to tech stuff or, or not. But yeah, it's I, a big challenge. It is a big challenge, yeah. But I, but I think even though what the situation we're in right now is deemed as terrible, um, I think it's actually giving a lot to the people that want to that are, that are receiving it. You know, in terms of the space, in terms of the getting out for walks, getting out on your bike, 
enjoying the sunshine. In, you know, I'm me personally, I'm talking to my family more than I've ever bloody talked to them. Um, <laughs> you know, through through this, like Zoom, you know, and yeah. it's fantastic because you all get to see each other and you get to, you know, to, to talk, yeah. which, which doesn't happen that often. No. Uh, and, and, and again, just to iterate there, it's not, the, it's not the circumstances that's changing how you're feeling. It's not the amount of time you get to spend with your family. It's, the, it's who you're being whilst with your family, because the point is we've all slowed down. Yeah. So now when we actually do get to connect, we're not in such a rush. Yeah. So that actually feels like quality time. It occurs as quality time spent together. Yeah. And it's not got anything to do with the amount of time. You know, we, we, that is an illusion that we can easily fall for, that we can now do this more. It's not. It's because we've, if we're able, because it could occur that, you know, that m more time, more time spent with family, more time to just be at home and chill out or whatever you want, that could occur as a really uncomfortable, unpleasant thing, depending on who you are. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's just, and, and also it's like any way of looking at something is just one way of looking at something. You know, saying that this is a terrible thing is one perspective. Yeah. But it's just one perspective. Someone else, you know, two people can look at the same situation and see two entirely different things. The mm -hmm. situation is the same. The points of view are different. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even about where they're looking from. It's about what they've got in their way stopping them seeing what they're seeing because if what they've got in their way is them trying to avoid this and get more of that then they can't see what's actually in front of their face yeah because all they can see is what they're trying to avoid and what they're trying to get they see everything in life through the lens of what they're trying to avoid and what they're trying to get it, it life becomes about what you like and what you don't like what you want and what you don't want what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with, how you want to feel, how you don't want to feel. You become like a leaf in the breeze, mm. you know? And there's just no power in that at all, at all. You know, there's just no satisfaction in that. It's no wonder that it, that, that drives us crazy. Okay. So, you know, like I, I feel that, you know, it's, it, it is a matter of perspective, but at the same time, we, we, to see things clearly, we have to get back to a place of nothing where we see all experience as just experience. And to take it out of the personal. Take it out of the personal viewpoint, you know? Stop making it about us. Realize that that moment out there in front of us has got nothing to do with us whatsoever. No matter what's happening, it's got nothing to do with us. But what has got something to do with us is how we respond to it. That moment is for us. It's, it's to allow us to take part in something. Who are we going to be in that taking part? That's yeah. who we are. That's who we are. Okay, well, there's been some amazing amazing nuggets of uh of wisdom there from you andy as always um and i'm sure the listeners are absolutely loving this right now you've given a ton of advice already but um not advice but you've given a ton of perspective mm. if if there was one thing that you could give to the listeners now um who who are who are feeling stuck or are feeling like they need to change their life mm. what would it be I think really it all comes down to what I was saying about feeling the need to fix stuff, feeling the need to fix circumstances. If you're in a situation where you're really stuck and you're really unhappy and you're really fulfilled and you just don't know what to do next. Well, you know what, how about just being with that stuckness and allowing yourself to just experience that stuckness and just be okay with the fact that you're stuck. You know, we don't even consider that. We think, we think to ourselves, oh, I can't be stuck. This can't, this shouldn't be happening. Yeah. But again, there's that resistance comes, there it is again, is that judgment, that decision that the things shouldn't be as the way they are. So really it's just even to just experience that stuckness, whatever it is for you that's occurring right now, just to be with that and just allow it. 
just to let it be and say, you know what? I'm stuck. And I love that. Thank you that I get to experience stuckness. And that might occur to somebody listening as absurd, <laughs> but that, that is a way of being that you then get to take into the next, uh, the, the next situation because it's only being okay with it that will free you up from it. Trying to fight it will keep that stuckness there. Being okay with it allows the dust to settle and it allows something to bubble up into your awareness that you wouldn't have been aware of in your frantic tearing around trying to fix something. So just being okay, letting the dust settle, and what if everything was just perfect the way it was? What if you could just sit and be with that, however, it, however unpleasant or uncomfortable it feels? Because if you can sit with that, I promise you, if you can truly be with that feeling or that way, how, that, those circumstances, and just be with that, it will, you will begin to see it transforming and shifting by itself and you don't need to do anything. And you'll start to realise that the only thing keeping it there was your resistance to it being there because by resisting it, you were focusing on it. You were placing your attention on it. So therefore it was growing. Classic law of attraction. And by allowing it, again, classic law of attraction the law of allowing by allowing something to just be and be with whatever is allows it to move on allows something else to come in place and you will in living that way you will just see the quality of your life raise quickly quite quickly but it has to be lived every day and you have to mean it yeah Ah, wonderful. Perfect. Um, right, well, thank you very much, Andy, um, for giving me your time today. And fantastic pearls of wisdom, as always. So if people want to reach out to you directly, what's the best way that they could um, find you? Do you know, actually, at the moment, I'm, um, I'm really in the process of, of, of building uh, all the online infrastructure um, and stuff so the website the facebook page all of that stuff's just kind of under under construction right now um so i don't actually have somewhere to go but you can just um that's all coming very shortly you sort of caught me in that in between phase of just you know setting this all up i think that you know just feel free to look me up on facebook really yeah um, yeah, just, just come check me out. You'll find me, or you can find my Facebook page, which is actually the, going to be the, the, um, the home of my coaching business. Um, and it's called make you real and you'll find that. At, you said again, just one word, make you real. Just, yep. I mean, obviously I can give you the links to put in the, in the description. Should anyone want to, want to find that? So, but yeah, you know, you feel free to come and connect and I'd invite anybody as well. So just come and have a converse, come and start a conversation and let me know that you heard me chat on this podcast with Mel. And let's just have a let's just have a chat. We're not talking about a coaching conversation. Let's just talk about what's going on and and um let's discover something new together. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you again, mate. Um great to see you as always. And you uh too. And thank you to the listeners there for tuning in again. I hope you really enjoyed this. I certainly did. So uh, see you on the next one. Thank you so much, Mel. Cheers. Cheers.